Glory God, bless every person that is hearing this program today. In Jesus' name, you are hearing the program, Gain to Know Jesus. And my name is Harris Kakalidi, Zenya, hearing the program, Gain to Know Jesus. In today's program, we will talk about when God seems to be silent. David seemed to have this experience of the silence of God in Psalms 28, when he states in the beginning of the psalm, To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. It seems from the verse that the silence of God made King David to cry and pray to God even more. For David knew, even in the silence of God, he had an audience with the King of Kings. And if he didn't respond to him, he would be lost or dead. For it seemed that the enemies of David had, was having the upper hand. And also Asaph experienced the silence of God when he states in Psalms 83, Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace, and do not be still, O God. C.H. Spurgeon states about this passage the following. God's enemies are making a noise, and the psalmist's prayer is that the Lord himself will speak and answer them. God's voice made the heavens and the earth. He spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. A single word from him will win the day. The poet's prayer is not grant a leader bold and brave, but Lord speak, speak, for lo, thy enemies makes atonement. The enemy of Israel, enemies of Israel were the enemies of God. They were our enemies only. We might keep silence, but as they are also the enemies of God, our loyalty to you, to the Lord, compels us to cry unto him, to speak against them, close quote. The silence of God can be a scary thing, but it can also serve to make us search for him even more. None of these two men gave up in praying and searching for God in the moment when God seemed to be rejecting them, even though their prayers was for God's glory to be shown or for the protection of God's people. But they call on God the more, even in God's quiet time. God seems to speak to us the most when he is the most quiet. When he takes all our comforts and things we hold dear away. When there is nothing left but to seek him. That is when the words of the Bible and to, be understand, and to understand them become so sweet as if it were food or water on a hot, thirsty day, and you're hungry. The book of Amos states, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. In that day the fair virgins and the strong young men shall faint from thirst. <clears throat> they rejected the word of God when they had every comfort on their side. But now they lost everything for everything that seems precious to us, that is not connected to God and his word, the Bible, is but vanity in this life and will pass away. Now they desire God and his word, they thirst for it and hunger for it, and it is denied to them. So they can realize what they had, which was so precious, as a man who was married for many years to his wife, then loses her through illness. He probably never thought how good it was to be married to her till he lost her. Those years that seemed bitter to him at times are the most wanted years to return again. In a book by C.S. Lewis named The Problem of Pain, he states, Now God, who has made us, 
knows what we are and that our happiness lies in him. Yet we will not seek it in him as long as he leaves us any other resort where it can be possibly be looked for. While what we call our own life remains agreeable, we will not surrender it to him. What then can God do in our interests but make our own life less agreeable to us and take away the possible sources of false happiness? It is just here where God's providence seems at first to be the most cruel, that the divine humility, the stooping down of the highest, most deserves praise, close quote. In the book of Isaiah, it states in Isaiah 8, verse 17, And I will wait for Jehovah, the height of his face, from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. When God hides all his blessings, he seems to be the most desirable. For there we do not seek God for his benefits, but for who he is. If there is ever a time to seek him the more, it is in those times when he seems to be the farthest, when all is lost except the three in one God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And only through the Lord Jesus Christ, who was and is God and man, we can draw closer to him. As man, Jesus knows what we feel, and for he was and is man. And as God, he is able to supply our need, which is that close relationship with God. God bless you. Now, see you next program of Getting to Know Jesus. Bye. If you enjoy this program, feel free to make a copy and give it to a friend. And that way, they will get to know Jesus as well. Bye.